One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. Even when you have like everything down pat, like you're just going to hit a day where just like nothing works just nothing and as long as you're not mentally in the gutter yeah gtt i almost longed that today yeah i almost i almost long not today i almost longed this here in the afternoon um i'm still thinking about it i mean just that you know the the thing that i don't like about it is i think everyone has the same idea that i do like uh you know, the long thesis being that, um, you know, super high ownership, super high short float, is it going to be the next Reddit thing? And th that's the thing is, I don't feel like I have an edge on that, just because I feel like that's what everyone is thinking about. it. And the thing is, if, if it had other factors that I liked, maybe, um, like if it was a pharma, if it had, a, you know, if it was like a pharma, if it was low float, or if it was, it had a forward-looking event, it had, you know, man, fundamental manipulative reason for the stock to be up, to close well, you know, something. And I don't know, it could be the case. I haven't done my DD on it, but I just, that's the only thing I got on it. What's up, guys? That's literally the only thing I have for why I should buy this. And I, I don't like buying when I just have one thing because it means that I'm not going to be all that convicted in it. It's, and that's like, I thought about buying it here on this dip. And I said, you know what? If this pulls back, we're getting into the end of the day. The likelihood that it just pops back from here, you know, that likelihood is just so low. So the chances that if I wait, I'll get it, I'll still have the same opportunity, like to, to buy it at a decent price. Like I can, you know, I don't have to be the guy that buys here, right? This is the guy who's buying first, the guy buying this dip here at 305. That's the guy who's buying first. You, you know, like you have to think, is this a buy first? Off, is this a buy? Like, do I need to buy first for this kind of setup? Um, it's, you know, we're near the end of the day. Um, you know, like, where do I think it can go? I mean, I would think it would, you know, if I'm longing this, I'm, you know, the idea is over four for me. That would be the idea is to get over four or at four. And I'm just like, well, I have plenty of time. You know, it's it's not a, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not a high volatile ticker. It's not fast. So I, you know, like most likely I'm going to have time to buy it at roughly the same, whether I buy it 305, 3, 295, 310 or 315, you know, anything in here really is all the same to me. If this is my target, right? Like, you know, wherever I decide to, if, I mean, I'm not even sold on buying it yet, but you know, like, wherever I would have decided to buy it, my risk is probably going to be somewhere around, you know, this three-ish level holding, you know, give or take maybe, um, you know, like depending on if you have to swing it, give or take maybe 280, maybe 280 is a sell. But like, you know, we're talking about 20, 30 cents or anywhere in here for, you know, 90 cents, you know, of gain or something like that. So, Basically, I just said that there was no rush to be in this kind of one. So um, I'm still waiting and I, I might not buy it, but I just, I don't feel like I have enough edge on it yet. And if tomorrow comes and it gaps down, like I'll be stoked that I didn't buy it. The gaps up tomorrow and this after hours, well, I guess I miss it. But, you know, when you miss stuff and it's not, you know, and you couldn't pin down a good enough reason to pull the trigger, you don't even think about it again. So but if you're the kind of if you're the kind of person who is always thinking about it, you know, if you're always like, oh man, I could have got that, I could have got that, I could have got that, like, oh man, like you're always feeling like you missed out just because you're always feeling like you missed out because every single buy, like every single passing thought that you have, like any anything resembling a trade idea that you thought about taking and didn't take, dude. We'd all be trillionaires, like if we took all those trades that did work that we didn't take, you know, that were passing fannies that we didn't really give enough 
that it didn't get to that next level of should I pull the trigger or not? Dude, like there's so many, oh yeah, I thought that was going to go up. Oh yeah, I thought that one would tank. And if you're the kind of guy that beats yourself up after every little missed opportunity, you are going to be FOMO king. Like you're never going to get over that. So I guess that's an opening lesson, I guess, to just, you know, to kind of cool off on the shoulders on like, you know, on needing to get everything that you think about. RHE. This one was kind of speculative. Uh, all righty. So let's get started. So today uh, we're going to be talking about decision making. It's a webinar I kind of wanted to do for a while. I've kind of hinted at it on a couple other ones. So it's kind of a point to webinar. Um, just want to talk about all the decisions that you can make throughout the trading day. Um, you know, kind of what the thought presses are when you're going through these decisions, what can help you make them, what you should be making the decision on, what you shouldn't. Uh, and we'll go over some of that cool stuff. Some of that, um, some of those fun fucking and not fun trader decisions that we all have to fucking make throughout the day. All right. So if this is your first webinar, welcome. Um, a couple of webinars are going to help, you know, if you're watching this on, you know, on replay. You know, a couple of webinars you should watch first are is the one I did last week, which is called Managing Your Day, and one I made a long time ago called Risk Management Techniques. You know, watching those first we can, will kind of help you with this one just because, you know, I'm, I'll be talking about concepts I know I talked about in those webinars, so that might help you through. Anyway, so if, you know, if you're watching this one, repeat, pause, and go watch, go watch those two first, at least the endings of them. <laughs> And that'll help you through this one. All right. So anyway, first we're going to go over the market sentiment. Um, pretty typical. Uh, pretty typical of what you know. I thought. Um, wow, kilos there at the ready. That's that's pretty impressive. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley, and one of the head mentors and monitors at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in the trading, getting started in the MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Anyway, um, then we'll go over the risk targets and entries on all the different kinds of stocks that move this week with, you know, good entries, bad entries, you know, possible targets, um, you know, risk, risk rewards that make sense. So start thinking about tickers that move this week. Um, uh, and then we'll get into decision making and Q&A webinar. Whenever you have a question, just go ahead and ask. You know, I try to, I try to look at the chat throughout the presentation and keep it engaging. So... You know, um, I'll try to get to it, and if not, just keep posting it. I'll eventually see it. All right, let's get started. Oh, this should have been caps when you wish upon a star. <clears throat> All righty. Yeah, so this week, um, we, had, we had a little bit more bulls than I thought that we were going to have. I, I really thought the market was kind of going to cool down, but, I mean, the bears are definitely still winning. Right, they're definitely still ever present in small cap land. Always, 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 you know, stocks that just pop and fail are always going to dwarf the amount of stocks that that you know just keep their momentum. Right, momentum. It's so much easier for momentum to die than it is for for momentum to continue. Anyway, uh, these were all the movers, uh, prominent movers that I saw that moved this week. Uh, so, I mean, if you're looking, thinking of stocks, here's a couple of lists. Here's a list to, to pull from. Um, anyway, so some of the bullish factors I saw this week is that we've been seeing an increase of midday movers, stocks that, you know, that were dead, that come back to life. I think that's great. Uh, reclaims are, get, dude, like I, I'll be going over this, but like some of the reclaims this week has been fucking astounding. And I've missed, I, I've missed honestly, um, uh, the biggest ones. I, I missed those super biggest ones. Like they happened in the middle of the day after I was gone. But some of those, and I was off, I took Monday off. But one of them happened Monday, I forget which one it was. But, G, but some of these reclaims have just this violent strength. And we'll be going over that. That's been a theme this week. Um, we're seeing multi-day movers again, like um, swings are starting to pay off um, in the mid-cap land. And so that's, that's starting to you know, be really nice. Um, 
various factors though is that this this morning weakness that, that's been plaguing us um and and I'm, I'm not just talking about the longs too like uh just morning weakness on the short seller side where um where like they give one opportunity to stuff and then that's it you know like that kind of stuff that's been still plaguing us and i think that's that's basically just that's just basically big supply taking advantage of all this increased volume we still have this is still record high volume. Like if you want to count volume over previous years, I don't know if this is going to continue, right? Like, you know, volume's at an all time high right now. And I think that's why we're seeing um, this influx of fucking of, of selling pressure come in. Uh, I don't know if we're going to continue and keep getting more and more and more, or if this is just like an anomaly top, we're going to kind of go back to, you know, a more, you know, like where 15 million shares is a you know 15 20 30 40 million shares that's a big day instead of these 500 million share days that we see on the big movers uh a lot of that is um a lot of that is algo algorithmic trading but algorithmic trading is only doing that because of there's increased volume participants right if there's no participants to you know get you know orders to slam on the ass and sell on the bid there's gonna you know there's gonna be less algo activity as well you know, a lot of those just copy orders and put bids out there to, you know, to mimic your order and stuff like that. So we're seeing, um, I think we're seeing a lot of that getting take advantage of, which is a, definitely a bearish factor. And the other bearish factor is that like, if you, if you look like this is a big thing about like a month or two ago where pre-market high would just not budge. We're still seeing that on, you know, for the most part where um, once a stock puts in a pre-market high, that's the top. More likely than not, I mean, I don't want to give a number seven out of ten, eight out of ten, or whatever it is, but more likely than not, that's the top. So that's another bearish factor, right? That deters longs from trying um, to to just push for stocks to push for Momo on 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 any name they can find. All right. So anyway, let's go to the let's go to the cues here. So anyway, last week, right, I talked about how like the market was testing the highs coming after that bounce, right? And, you know, right, basically right now the market was seeing how comfortable we were, right? Um, and that like we saw that little kind of sell off on the day that we did the webinar, but, you know, I thought that was normal, that index, I, and I pointed out that I thought the indexes were a little bit ahead of the stocks, you know, but thankfully this week the stocks really caught up. And so that, that kind of puts an ease to that worry when, you know, for, I thought that when the indexes got a little bit too ahead, that was just almost almost like FOMO buying, like people feeling like they missed it, like, but they're not buying the stocks, they're just buying the indexes because they don't want the index to go up, go up without them. So, um, you know, I, I was a little afraid of that, but a lot of the names kind of caught up this week. So I'm really stoked about that. Um, so, and that's why I kind of wanted the indexes to pull back a little bit. I was like, if the indexes pull back, um, as long as you stay above 410 and 330, you know, like I, I still thought we were bullish and everything was fine, but I did thought that there was that kind of separation again, but I think that we're, we're better now. Um, but, you know, I, I even pointed out that, you know, like as long as you stayed above 410 and 330 on the Qs and the SPY, um, I, I would think it was bullish, but because the market loves to test those emotions, like I was okay with the day like snapping under as long as it or, or going under as long as it kind of snapped back on that day to really show that there was support there. What we got was um, a nice little, uh, uh, I mean, this was the dip we got on the queues, but the SPY held like a very perfect for 415, pretty, pretty perfect. Well, I don't know what the day this was. This was 618. What was that on Friday? The day after I did the webinar. All right, so that, that very next, you know, so this is that day we kind of saw the resistance that I was talking about. That next day, that resistance scared a whole bunch of people. But then, you know, we kind of, you know, we, we hold 315 and then the next day we just kind of snap up. That's that kind of snap back um, that I was talking about, that I, that snap back kind of bullish runaway, like showing that like, hey, support's here. We don't want to be here. There is support here. Let's go see highs. So that's basically what we did this week. And you see it like you saw a whole bunch of other names kind of bounce strong, like Tesla bounced strong today. Uh, AMD, AMD is, is, you know, it's continuing to run from like this double bottom here. You know, that that's continuing really hot, really well. What was another one? Baba. Baba's not doing so hot. Um, and NVIDIA is going to copy. I forget all of the tickers. 
that I was that I was keeping an eye on. Netflix is Netflix is pulling away from this double bottom that we had. So you know we're seeing a lot of uh, stronger recoveries on on a lot of these names. How are we get through this? Yeah. So I mean these came back airlines. Um, what's what was the other one? There's a couple more that I had on the slide where I really picked all the beta stocks. Now I kind of forget about them. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.